This is the first of the Tatango series on Boldly Grow in an Unstable Economy. Um, I would like to welcome to our webinar, which is growing um, in a time of uncertainty and really thinking about what is your growth lifesaver? What can you really lean on now? And of course, we know this is going to be your customers and growing through your customers. Let me begin by welcoming you. My name is Jamie Bertese, President and COO of Tatango, and I have the pleasure today of being joined by Ken McMahon, the Global Head of Customer Success from Nextiva, which is a Tatango customer and a connected communications company. Let me just uh, stop, pause for, here for a quick second, let Ken say hello and uh, introduce himself a little bit. Well, thank you, Jamie. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here today. Uh, it's a pleasure. And I've been in the industry for <clears throat> longer than I would like to admit, 27 years within telecommunications as well as software as a service company. Uh, I joined Nextiva uh, just at 14 months ago. Um, Nextiva is a young 13 year old company that is growing very fast. And we have some exciting um, services that we provide to our customers that we believe differentiates ourselves in the market as we connect our customers with their engagements with their customers, whether it be video, SMS, um, instant messaging, or customer surveys, so that customers have a single application to manage their engagements with their customers. But we had some gaps, uh, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we implemented Tatango to address some fundamental issues that we had within the business. So I'm excited about the conversation, Jamie. Awesome, thank you, Ken. <clears throat> so let's just jump right in. So we all know that right now, really there's a lot of uncertainty in the world, right? And we're trying, all trying to figure out how do we continue to hit the growth goals that we've set for our companies? And how do we continue to uh, really move the needle for our, our businesses that we're in? And what that means at this point is really starting to try and find ways to embrace the uncertainty that we see around ourselves, whether it's in the stock market, or whether it's uh, you know hiring plans that are some are now kind of in flux, whether it's uh, goals that seemed achievable at the beginning of the year that now are looking a little difficult, um, but we've got to really lean into these uncertain times and try and find a way through it that is something that we can really rely on. And you know, so this begs the question, and I think uh, those of us attending today are really interested in what can we do when things look uncertain. Right. Some of the things that we thought we could lean on the areas like, you know, new logo acquisition or growing through uh, sales, you know, new logos coming into the company, into our businesses, they're looking a little shaky. Maybe for your business, things are taking a little bit longer in terms of the customers making their decisions to move forward, or maybe budgets are being cut. Right. It's, it's a little bit different for everybody, but we all see these uh, these uncertain economic times right now. And, you know, each day brings forth brings forth a uh, kind of a new revelation, I think, in terms of what's going on in the world, and we've got to find our way through it. So what can we do? And at this point, what we can do is try and find certainty with our greatest asset, which is our customer base, right? So if before you were thinking about, okay, maybe my growth strategy is 50% new logo and 50% my customer base, growing from my customer base, you might have to be looking at really a mixed shift there. And we wanted to schedule this first in our three-part series on growing in times of economic uncertainty because we've been getting asked at Tatango, you know, as a leader in the customer success space, we've been getting asked by our customers this question of, okay, what more should I be doing? What more can I be doing? And our answer is you need to lean into growth in your customer base. So again, if your mixed shift before was say your shift, but your mix between new logo and acquisition was. I mean, new logo and customer growth was 50-50. Maybe now it needs to be 70-30, uh, meaning growing from the customer base versus growing from new logo because you can control the uh, situation with the customer base and the growth that you are getting there, whereas new logo it might be a little harder for you based on the economic conditions. So what does that mean? We thought what Ken and I would, thought we would do is just kind of talk about some of the things that we're seeing some of the leading companies doing, those who are, at, who are growing uh, rapidly, even in, in these uncertain times. And one of the things that I wanted to call out that we're seeing is that really successful companies and leaders in those organizations are can delivering continuous value for the customer before the deal is signed, 
right? And this is something that isn't always in, incredibly apparent. I think that the many of us, the way we've thought about our businesses and we've gotten, you know, kind of come up uh, in, uh, in our careers is to think about, okay, once the customer signs the contract, then they're a customer, then I invest in them, then I start to deliver value and our onboarding programs kick in or educational programs kick in, you know, and so forth. But in the world we're living in today, what we're seeing the most successful companies do is deliver value, more value than you think you even can, is the minute you start talking to that customer or the minute that customer starts to engage with you. And I can give you examples as we go through the webinar today um, from some of what uh, learnings Tutango's had, as well as Ken, I think we'll chime in as, uh, and talk a little bit more about what Nextiva is seeing as well. And from our side, one of the things I can explain to you is we've really seen success with bringing our onboarding programs all the way to the very first touch points with customers, right? Putting digital programs together that we can actually scale out in a, in a um, you know, economic way, right? They're not, they're one to many, they're, you know, they're, um, they're digital programs through videos, things like that. So it's not necessarily heavily human um, cost oriented. So it's scalable, but delivering those just from the very, and offering them to the customers from the very, very early days. Another thing that we are really seeing the most successful companies doing is reorienting their operating model. So as I mentioned, if the old world is kind of an acquisition driven model that you can see on the left slide of the uh, left portion of the slide here, which is okay, I'm all about new logo acquisition. Everything I do with my company is about bringing on new customers. Of course, you still want to bring on new customers. Of course, this is going to be an important thing for you. But in the world that we're living in today, dri driving value towards your customer base um, and moving away from your, sh your shift, shifting away from just the sole focus on new local acquisition is where we're seeing um, the most successful companies get growth. So they're going from the customer base, as well as, of course, new logos that are coming in. And what that requires really to execute, right, to operationalize that and execute at, uh, on that at, an, at a, uh, you know, a very high scale level, let's just say, is it requires kind of a reorientation of the organization. It may not be a reorganization of the organization, but what I'm calling a reorientation, which is to make sure that all the groups are working together, the customer success team, the sales organization, the product organization, the support organization, the marketing organization, to really come together in an integrated fashion to deliver value to those customers from your very first interaction with them, even at a prospect level. And if you do that and you can find ways for your business to deliver value, repeatedly and early, you are gonna see some very uh, exciting returns. And these are the kinds of numbers that we're seeing those folks who are the leading edge, co edge companies who've already reoriented from the new logo kind of focus to customer growth focus, these are the kinds of numbers that we're seeing them deliver. And I think the one that uh, really jumps out as most critical is net revenue retention. You know, 125% and plus, net revenue retention. It's the hallmark of a very healthy company that's growing its customer base and keeping its customers with, you know, very loyal customers with low churn rates and very, very fast growth. So this is what you guys should be really thinking about and trying to figure out how do I get myself there, okay? So let's just talk about this for a quick second. Uh, and Lorena is going to go ahead and release a poll now, which is to, for you guys to just go ahead and uh, click on whether you are focused on new logo acquisition or customer growth or both. And let's just give that a minute while it uh, it comes in and we can uh, take a look at the answer here. So I see everybody going in and responding right now. All right. So, so far, what we're seeing is that there really is a nice shift on the um, uh, on the of the attendees on our webinar here today. 60% of you guys are saying that you are focused on both. 33% are saying you're focused solely on customer growth and only 7% of you are saying you're focused solely on acquisition. So what's super interesting is this really also supports, uh, you know, our vantage point, which is customer growth is the thing right now in these times of us economic uncertainty, you've got to lean into. And to lean into customer growth, that means, you know, all aspects of your customer relationship, all aspects <clears throat> of your uh, operating model. So with that, Ken, let me turn it over to you. Okay. 
to talk a little bit more about Nextiva and what you guys are seeing in terms of customer growth and these same uh, these same concepts. Yeah, absolutely, Jamie. And I couldn't vote; it wouldn't let me vote. But huh. uh, from an Nextiva standpoint, you know, we're leaning in heavily on the investment of the customer success team or our account management organization because we understand the value that our customer base brings to the organization, especially during these uncertain times. But as we looked at solving some fundamental issues within our organization, um, we realized how precious the acquisition sales are to the organization. And one of the problem statements that we wanted to solve with Tatango, if you could go to the next slide, was getting better visibility and engagement early life with our small business accounts. Uh, Nextiva is very successful in the small business segment of the market. And we have a very um, sophisticated, easy to use onboarding wizard. Uh, but when I joined the organization, I realized that a lot of our customers that purchase Nextiva services um, had a high rate of early life churn. And as we dug into that issue, we realized we didn't have a lot of visibility to the customer's journey during the first 90 days with Nextiva. So customers were receiving a welcome email and they had the ability to sign on and configure their communications platform and begin use, using the platform. However, we were not driving engagement based off the customer's reaction or their progress throughout that process. And so if you can go to the next slide, I've given just one example, because there's a number of paths a customer could go through as they're onboarding Nextiva services early life. And in fact, you reference free trials. We have a journey that's very similar to this, that's all around the free trial experience and the customer engagement. And so what we've done in leveraging Tatango is we have set up a very prescriptive experience where we engage with customers based on their progress through the onboarding experience. So as an example, we send obviously a welcome kit. The customer can then engage and start to create their users, create their call flow, create the engagement they wanna have with customers. But we notice that some customers would stop at step three and they wouldn't complete the process. And historically we had no visibility as to did they stop at three? Did they go to four? Why did they stop at three? And so within Tatango, we now have the visibility to track the customer through that process and then engage with them. It could be digital engagement, or we in fact actually have a team that reaches out to customers that may be stuck or not progressing through the experience. Because we have found, Jamie, that customers that utilize our onboarding wizard and complete that wizard and have early life adoption and early life value with the platform have a significantly higher survivability rate with the company. And so our investment here with Tatango has proven some pretty powerful results for the organization. And if you go, can go into the next slide, you'll see that we've been able to really improve three core metrics by utilizing Tatango and providing a prescriptive customer journey first we were able to reduce the percent of account cancels in the first 90 days by 54%. So this is taking prior quarter compared to a 12 month trailing average. We were also able to reduce tech support cases in the first 90 days by 68%. So as you can imagine in the SMB space, uh, margins are tight. And so as customers call in more and more from a technical support perspective, not only is that a bad customer experience, uh, but it's also very costly for the organization. And so by following the customer's journey and identifying triggers to engage customers and help them, we were able to reduce the customer's need to call us in the first 90 days by 68%. And then the other key part, as you know, is time to value. When a customer makes an investment in a platform, they want to realize the value of that investment as soon as they possibly can. And so we really focused on days to implementation or days to onboarding completion where they were actually utilizing the platform to achieve that value. And we were able to reduce the days to install by 63%.
And, and all of this, Jamie, is a it's a high velocity engine. So these are a, a large quantity of accounts that are coming in every day and utilizing Tatango and our onboarding wizard, we've been able to implement these accounts with these improvements with really low touch engagement with the customer, which I think a lot of customers um, expect in today's environment. That's right. So it's really been impactful for our business, Jamie. Yeah, that's so great. So compelling. I think, you know, and it's really a, uh, kind of reiterates what we were saying here, which was delivering that customer value at really early. And so for you guys right here, you're just getting it going right off the bat with it, with the quick onboarding and um, the, you know, useful um, help with the wizard and so forth. So the customer has that kind of first impression, really, really positive first impression. And the other thing I think, Ken, maybe you want to say one word on for our audience here is, um, Nextiva is relatively new to all this, right? You guys have been doing this now for kind of working with Tatango and kind of implementing these programs and, and trying to scale this all out for about how long? Yeah, so we implemented Tatango for the implementation team that we're referencing here in August of 21. So, so we're just even, coming up on our, a year yeah. um, for the first implementation. Um, the second implementation was really around our customer success team or our account management team. And we just started that process probably four months ago. So we still have a lot of activity and engagement with you and your organization mm -hmm. on ensuring that's successful. Uh, but we've made a lot of strides in a short period of time. But I think the, maybe the point you're getting at, Jamie, is our time to value with Tatango was pretty darn short. So once we implemented it in August, you know, we started seeing some pretty um, substantial improvements in business results in the following quarter. So it was uh, a great relationship between both parties. Right. And Nexiva, you know, as, as uh, what's I think interesting for people to kind of understand is Nexiva as a company, as you mentioned, it's been around 12, 13 years, a very successful, large organization. This is not a you know, kind of a small ship that you're turning and maneuvering here. So I think the fact you guys have driven these results, very compelling uh, results for your customer base and growing the customer base and so forth so early is, uh, is just, just, you know, awesome to see. So I guess we're going to talk a little bit more about um, the account management side of it now, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Jamie, when I joined and I started spending a lot of time with the account management team and talking about how do we engage with our customers and what process do we use, um, I started to receive a lot of spreadsheets. Um, and unfortunately, you know, depending on who the account manager was or who their manager was, we really had a different process as to how we engaged with our customers. So clearly not a consistent um, or scalable experience. And when I talk to the team, you know, one of the most important things, in my opinion, when talking to a customer, it's about adding value in the conversation. Um, I cannot stand the check-ins. You know, when, when an account manager calls me and says, hey, Ken, how are things going? Yeah. Uh, that's not value for me. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, value for me is when they call and they have insight for me. Mm -hmm. And they call and they say, hey, Ken, you know, you've got this powerful platform, but only 20% of your organization is using it. They're bringing value to me so that I can take business action uh, to improve the value that I'm receiving from their application. And man, I was a little nervous because I was getting these spreadsheets and some people were engaging with their customers kind of first in, first out. So, you know, I've got 200 customers and I'm going to talk to the customer today that I haven't talked to the longest. And then clearly that's not uh, the right approach. And so what we've done with Tatango is we're really focused around building a consistent, scalable engagement journey with our customers by taking information that we have within our Salesforce environment, connecting that with Tatango with, you know, bi-directional sync so that we can have an automated portfolio management process where we have triggers built in for the account managers to know when they need to engage with a customer. And so we've started um, in, in short order, leveraging Canvas to kind of document the customer journey that we want to implement, and then building a playbook for our account managers so that when they come in today and they start work this morning, they already have a list of actions based off customer engagement or contract timeframe, first bill review, new account introduction, whatever that task is, we have pre-built their daily activities based off the journey that we have defined within Canvas and within Tatango. 
Yeah, that's great. So this is Canvas, right? This is just a view of kind of how you guys have been uh, optimizing and working. Yes. So we took Canvas as a way to kind of document the journey and then build that playbook around the customer experience that we wanted to have uh, within Canvas. And so the team utilizes Canvas uh, on a regular basis to build out those journeys. Great. And then, you know, we have seen some results. As I stated, this is pretty darn early. We really just started uh, implementing this in the March timeframe for our account management team. But we're all, all, already starting to see some improvements in churn, uh, as well as revenue growth within the base. And so if I look at a year over year comparison of 3Q results from 20 to 21, our fiscal year ends uh, June 30th. So we're just about at the end of the year. Uh, so this is an exciting time here at Nextiva. But managed churn is revenue churn associated with accounts that have an account manager. Um, and we've seen a 12% decrease in churn, but we've also seen a decrease in our unmanaged churn. And a lot of that, Jamie, is driven by what I talked about earlier. It was really reducing that early life churn in the small business segment that's given us the 14% improvement year over year in unmanaged churn. Because a lot of those SMB customers that are one or two lines do not have a dedicated account manager. And that's where we were seeing a lot of churn activity. But then we've also been able to realize a 10% increase in the revenue generated by the account management team based off the engagement. So we were transitioning from what I would call a very reactive transactional account management team to an account management team that's focused on solutions, which you hear a lot about in the industry around solution selling. But the account management team here was really reacting to customers when they called in versus us being very prescriptive about how we wanted to engage with the customer and assisting them in solving business problems. Awesome. Okay, so I, my slide seems to have uh, jumped ahead here, but I will say that um, you know it's super exciting to see the results that you guys are delivering. I think that um, as you end the fiscal, it'll be fun to see your calculations on net revenue retention because with those kinds of metrics that you're looking at right now, I'm sure that the results are going to be very, very positive for you. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I think that is uh, really, really exciting to see. So now uh, I wanna open it up to questions for our audience so that folks can please go ahead in the uh, Q and A and put your questions in there for Ken or myself. But as we wrap up on this, one of the things I wanna make sure that we leave people with, which is some concrete next steps. What should they be doing <clears throat> in these times of economic uncertainty? So the first thing that, that we're really recommending is that you're, be, you're sure that you're current on your customer health. Stay current on your customer health. If you noticed in Ken's slides, he talked about, you know, and had health in there as like a monitoring system that would allow him and the team to kind of understand when there's an issue, right? And they're scaling out their programs and they've got to have a sense for when there's an issue that they need to address. And that allows them to take what we call taking action on risk. So as Ken mentioned, if somebody gets stuck in their digital onboarding program, there's a team that's reaching out, right? They can see that, they can take action, they can help that customer get unstuck. And thematically, they're delivering value early and often. And we also at Tatango have seen tremendous results with this as well. So again, think about the value, define the value, deliver value. It's just a general concept constantly, constantly. And then you really wanna make sure to drive that customer growth that you're scaling through digital. Everything you're doing today that's human led, move everything to digital and then have humans helping as well, because you'll be able to do a lot more with it, specifically around expansion or upsell uh, in particular. And uh, I think this is an area where many of us have used human beings in the past to kind of drive that increase that Ken's seeing, for example, in monthly recurring revenue. But now is the time because we've got to scale this out because of the uncertainty and driving additional growth. Now is the time for innovation there. I really want to make sure that you're scaling your expansion, scaling your growth through all of your digital programs. And we here at Tatango would be more than happy to help you with that. Okay, so with that, we're going to open it up to questions. Lorena, do you want to um, uh, go ahead and let us know if there are any? Yes, there's two questions. There's one in the chat. 
Um, and then there's also one in the Q&A icon below. The okay. first one in the chat says, if you're new to the organization, how would you recommend assessing the company's current customer success processes? How would you, how would I recommend assessing the current customer success processes? Well, I think that um, you can certainly uh, contact someone like Tatango. We'd be happy to help you with that. Take a look, give you our feedback, our guidance on what we would recommend. Ken, what did you do at Nexiva when you yeah, came? I, you know, um... My, my recommendation is always put yourself in the seat of the customer when trying to do that. And so, you know, identify a group of customers. You may want to identify a couple that may be in the low end segment, mid market enterprise, kind of walk through what has been their historical engagement with your company and what has been their experience. And then kind of match that up with what would you want that experience to be? I think a lot of times I, I know internally challenging the team not to think about what our process is, but think about what we want the customer experience to be. Um, so I know Tatango has experts that help with those type of things. Uh, I guess my advice would always be try to do it um, as a customer versus doing it as a company because you get kind of caught in how you've done things in the past or how you think sh things should be done. Um, or even look at your competitive environment and see what the experience your, your competitors are providing as well. Great insights. Yes, I totally agree. Okay, Lorena, next one. What was your business case for your company to proceed with Tatango? It is tough to get companies to spend money right now with the fear of the looming recession. I certainly understand the value. It's been tough helping our CRO see it too. Yeah, that's a Nancy, that's a great question. Um, you know, the the approach that I took when joining was really focused identifying a fundamental issue within the business. And my fundamental issue was early life churn. And so I could clearly identify the financials associated with losing the customers that we were losing in the first 90 days. And then what I did is I found a break even point that said, okay, if I reduce that early life 90 day churn by X percent, it'll cover the costs that I'm going to incur with Tatango. And when we did the data, I mean, it was pretty amazing. Uh, it didn't take a lot um, yeah. to cover that cost. And so when I presented that analysis to our CFO, uh, and demonstrate the fact that, look, we don't have to have a significant improvement in churn to cover the costs, but the opportunity to improve churn is great. Uh, it became a pretty easy decision, at least it was for us here at Nextiva. Yeah, and I see customers doing a couple of different things. One is that uh, you can start small. So you don't have to, we at Tango, one of the things we believe in is something we call composable customer success, which is basically modularity. So you can start with just one workflow or just one area, focus on that, improve that, and then move on to another and to another and to another. So you don't have to just go you know, all in with a big, big investment right off the bat. You can show the returns to your organization and then add more. So that's one thing. But the, the other thing I see people doing a lot is exactly what Ken's uh, referring to here is the business case. A lot of times what they're able to do is um, reduce the headcount in the organization. And I think today, as a result of, uh, you know, as a result of the economic uncertainty, of course, all of us, I think, are being asked to do more with less, right? That's just a given in the world that we're living in. So uh, headcount reductions, as well as, as well as um, efficiency improvements and additional growth are areas that you can point to as well to help with the business case. One of the areas that we see uh, a lot of efficiency improvement around are things like uh, uh, customer meetings, QBRs, automation, these types of things where we can really, uh, in using technology, you can do these things much, much more quickly and therefore have, you know, the team can do, uh, the team can be much more efficient, let's just say it to you that way. So happy to talk more about that offline too, and feel free to shoot us an email, me or Ken, and we'd happy to discuss that further with you. But for sure, every single customer has to have, you know, to deliver that net revenue retention, you've got to have a strategy and you've got to have your uh, your business case, you know, uh, I think uh, made to the CFO. And then the, another, the final question, did you roll out the early life customer journey for existing life customers or just new customers? And this is for you, Ken. Uh, we did for both um, existing as well as new. So we focused initially, you know, to Jamie's point, you can kind of start small and we started smaller with the implementation team. And that was focused on the new. 
But as we've gotten into the account management implementation, we focused on the existing and the new, because obviously you have to have that transition from implementation or onboarding into the account management structure. That's right. Okay, and we're just about over on time here. So I want to just wrap up and thank everyone for attending. We have two more upcoming webinars as part of this three part series. <clears throat> the next one will be on July 14th on recession proof your business. And then the uh, last will be July 21st, five strategies for customer growth. The other thing that I will mention to folks, there's two other things I'll just uh, throw out to you. One is we are having our customer success summit for teams the Teams edition, um, and this is going to be very hands-on learning for customer success leaders and their teams, September 14th to 16th in Miami Beach, Florida. So we encourage you to register. That will be something that you can take back very tangible strategies and uh, ideas to your company from all the others who, like much like Ken and his team, who will be there and will be presenting what has worked for them and the kinds of results that they're driving. So I encourage you guys to um, to take that, take us up on that and um, uh, meet, meet up with the customer base at Miami. And then the other thing I will throw out to you is that we have a free community edition. So for those of you who are still working through kind of the business case piece of this, trying to think about it, what do you need, et cetera, feel free to go in and sign up for the free community edition of Tatango and you'll get, you know, you can, you know, get a lot of help and assistance there in terms of understanding the value that you might be able to bring to your organization. And of course, Ken and I both are happy to help in any way. I am Jamie at tatango.com and uh, feel free to shoot me an email as well. And with that, thank you so much for your time today. And thank you, Ken. You bet. Thank you very much.